here and welcome to a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where again, we learn just a little bit of deep learning and a whole lot of Keras. And today is the last episode, um, unless I get an outpour of comments that suggest that we should have some more. Um, so today we're saving the best for last. We're talking about model visualization, as well as using some of the really cool pre-trained models that Keras has. So literally just doing the deep learning for you. So if you're ready, let's get started. Model visualization. So let's say we have this simple model right here. Again, it's using denses, it's using activations, all the good stuff you're familiar with. Um, and we want to visualize it. You know, classically we have the we've got the model summary. Um, uh, model about summary. You know, it's like uh, this is okay, right? But we want to we want to look at it, right? Ooh, just get a, get our get our eyes and just glue them there. Um, and this is incredibly important if you don't have a sequential model, you know, if your model branches off and, and, and sort of rebranches back in. So the simple way that you can do this is use the uh, keras.utils.visutils model to dot. And this will make like a little, um, uh, little like visualization. I, I'm just going to show it to you. No need to. And so we'll make this little visualization for you. We'll show you all the layers and kind of where they point and it's like really nice. Um, and so to sort of give you the full functionality of this, I want to show you this in particular on some of the pre-trained models. So Keras has a ton of pre-trained models. They have exception, DGG, 16, 19, ResNet, blah, 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 a ton of these models. You can import them. They're already pre-trained on, I believe it's all on ImageNet. Um, uh, exception is only available on TensorFlow because of some, some stuff like that. But yeah, these, these guys are big, fancy models that you can use to immediately do image classification. In fact, you can take the chunk of these models, use them to do image classification, and then change the top layer of these models in order to do um, uh, some of this question answering, visual question answering, for example. Um, okay, so let's, let's just not, not beat the dead horse and just get under the bus. Um, so okay, so here we go. So this is a VGG. And it's massive, and this is so cool that you're able to actually do these like cool visualizations here. Um, so you get a ton of convolutions, you've got a ton of max pool, or yeah, a couple of max poolings. Um, it's like a very, very classic standard like model, VGG16. If you do 19, it's going to be even bigger, 19 layers. Um, ResNet, this guy is probably the powerhouse these days, um, though, again, by the time I actually um, uh, talk about this, it, there's going to be something else that's new. Um, takes a little bit because it's a big model um, so it's, 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 a, it's a big boy um, and so in this case this is kind of cool because it actually does have branching and you can look at this so we go ahead we do some branching over here um, so we go into a, a ResNet branch uh, in this case uh, this uh, the, the classic thing about ResNet has these kind of like skip connections here so you'll see it has like activation we do some convolu convolutions, batch normalization, convolution, batch normalization, and then we add it back to the original output. It has a lot of these. And you can visualize it all right here. Um, you can even save this out to a file. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. Um, all these models, they're open source, they're free to use, of course, um, and they can make doing deep learning really, really uh, fast. Uh, so I've, I've used these guys a couple of times in order to do baselining, as well as so the, in order to make more powerful models. Um, okay, uh, the, the final thing here is that if you're going to be using um, the Keras applications like ResNet, they each have their own process input and decode predictions. Um, and so you want to be using these functions uh, when you're doing any input or uh, prediction uh, pre or post processing. Okay, so that's that's going to be it. Um, so again, you know, if you if you have uh, liked this content at all, please do subscribe. Uh, it, it really does me a service. It lets me know that you guys are interested and lets me know what is interesting to you. Please comment and ask any questions that you'd like. Um, uh, I, I'm going to be doing sort of a direction video uh, shortly after this uh, to talk a little bit about where I'm going to be going uh, and what we've done in the past um, and give you guys a little bit more sense of direction. Okay, so uh, thank you. Um, I, I hope you keep tuning in. And uh, this was a little bit of deep learning in Keras.